Okay, we have this difficult looking integral on the board. We have the integral of dx over two plus sine x plus two cosine x. If you, were, if you were able to solve this using trig identities or some other method, let me know in the comments, I'd be interested. But I just went, I didn't look into that. What I did is I wanted to make the substitution t equals tan over x over two. And this here might seem like it just came out of nowhere or I'm crazy because we don't even have tangent and we don't have x over two. So everything seems wrong about this. This is known as a wear stress substitution over here. Um, so this is when we do a half angle substitution. So we're typically using it in cases like this where we have a trig integral where we're adding uh, functions in the denominator. Now you could try to use it in other cases like when you're multiplying trig functions or more, you could pretty much try to use it in any case. But I find that it usually makes the problem harder. It's only these kind of specific cases where it really helps us. Okay, so now that we've made the substitution, we gotta figure out how do we actually use this because what's our dx gonna be? What is sine x gonna be? What is cosine x? Um, what are we gonna do from here? Well, to start with, we can just use the um, arctan to write this a little different. So we can write this as tan inverse tan is x over two. Then we can multiply a two on both sides. So we've isolated our x. Then we can say dx is gonna be two times the derivative of inverse tangent, but we know what that is. That's just gonna be one plus t squared. Okay, so now we found one useful value that we can use in our substitution. Now, what about the fact we need uh, something for sine and cosine, but we also need to get rid of this half angle because we can't, so it makes it a little difficult to work with that way. So what we can do is draw a right triangle where the angle we're looking at is gonna be x over two. And then if they, that's the case, our opposite over adjacent is just gonna be t over one, which is the same thing as t. Then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find our hypotenuse, which is just gonna be t squared plus one, just taking the square of each of those. And then what that allows us to do with this triangle is allows us to find our value for sine of x over two, which is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's just gonna be t over t squared plus one squared. And then for cosine x over two, it's just gonna be one over the hypotenuse, t squared plus one, square root of t squared plus one. But now in order to use these values, we'd like to get it back to x and not have x over two. So what we can do is use our double angle formulas. Okay, so now we have the double angle formulas for sine and cosine here. And this is gonna help us, but the one problem, what we want is a way to go from the half, instead of going from x to two x, we wanna go from half angle to the full angle. So what we can do is wherever we see an x, replace it by an x over two in this formula, like this. And then if we do that here, you'll notice the twos cancel, the twos cancel, and we have exactly what we want. So now that we have a formula for sine and x, sine x and cosine x, and that's what we're gonna need in the problem when we get back to that. And we have, we know all these values here from over here. So we'll just use those and kind of plug them in. Okay, so looking at our sine of x formula, I filled in my values here for sine x over two, cosine x over two using that. So now we just multiply that across and we're gonna have for sine x, two t, multiplying t, square root of t squared plus one times itself, we just get back t squared plus one. Then here for this one, when we square it, we're gonna eliminate the square root here in the um, denominator and have the same uh, denominator. So when we actually put this all together, we're gonna have one minus t squared over one plus t, t squared. Okay, so now I've summarized all the values that we found over here to the right. This is everything we need to solve this problem. I also just threw in here tan of x, which I just got by dividing our sine expression by our cosine expression. And you could do the same thing for secant, just taking the reciprocal of cosine and cosecant, you could take the reciprocal of sine. Okay, so now let's just do the substitution and see how this thing is gonna work out. So we're gonna have, I'm just gonna, we'll put just a one on top. Then we're gonna have our two plus sine of x is gonna be this value here. So that's gonna be 2t over t squared plus one, plus two times cosine x is gonna be one minus t squared over one plus t squared. And then we just need our dx right here. So that's gonna be two over uh, one plus t squared. 
The reason why these work out pretty nice sometimes is because we get a cancellation, which is gonna help with this one plus two squared here. And then we just need to distribute it to this first term. So let's rewrite this. Then next, let's just to see if we can clean up this denominator we're gonna have here, we'll distribute. We're gonna have two plus two t squared plus two t, there's a lot of twos in this, plus two minus two t squared. Then we notice that these, the two t squareds cancel here. Um, we could just cancel every two, right? And then what we're left with is gonna be dt. I know it's confusing because we have like a one there and a one there. So this is gonna be t plus t two in the denominator. Okay, so now we can actually integrate and obviously this is pretty simple. The integral of t one over t plus two is just natural log absolute value t plus two plus c. Now we can just back substitute. We know what our t is, it's tan x over two. That's our initial substitution. So we're gonna have ln tan x over two plus two plus c. So this is a perfectly good answer right here. But what we can do, if we wanna get rid of this half angle, we can use this identity. We have this identity that says tan x over two equals one minus cosine x over sine x. We also could actually simplify this a little more. We could write this a different way. We could write this as cosecant x minus cotangent x, and then just put that back in our answer. So, so for our final answer, we can have ln absolute value cosecant x minus cotangent x plus two plus c, and we're done. I got this problem from my quiz, wear stress substitution. I'll provide a link in the description. It's got a lot of good problems like this one. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.